Hey guys, welcome back to another Fly Tying Tuesday with Avid Max. My name is Max, and today we're going to be tying Gallop's Flatliner. Uh, kind of the mini Flatliner. Uh, we're going to be using a 2 and a 4, uh, but Gallop does it again. I mean, it's a really great bait fish pattern. Uh, a lot of movement in the water, unweighted, uh, which allows you to fish it on a sinking line, giving it a lot of action in the water. Um, just a great fly all around. Uh, we're going to be doing like a brown and a white today with some rusty copper uh, kind of mixed in there. So in the vise, we got a uh, MFC wide gap streamer hook. This is the straight eye uh, style number 7050. Um, and this is the size four, and then we'll transition to the two. Um, so we're gonna leave mainly the back of this hook bare um, and kind of tie in everything within like the first quarter, uh, first third or so of hook here. Snip out my tag. So now got some schloppin uh, that is already prepped for me. These are just the hairline ones. Uh, we have a lot of good options here at Avid Max though. Fish Hunter has some really nice schloppin uh, along with whiting. So I got two feathers prepped here uh, and this is going to make up our tail. So I kind of already measured them out a little bit and we want them a little longer than the shank of this hook. Shorten it a little bit and grab those and tie them down. I'll make a couple wraps in front and snip out my tag here. Pull those back. Everything's secured nicely. So, looking good. Got our flash boo. Really nice mix of colors that you know will go well with our our color scheme here. And pull out a couple strands. Snip that and make the tips a little uneven kind of give a pull right in the middle so then it kind of has a nice taper to it as you tie it in and we're just going to tie to just shy the length of schloppin feathers and then I don't want to have too much in there so I will not fold it back over I'll just leave it like so and we're gonna go with the, the mini barred MFC in the brown and barred black. So I'm gonna tie this right on top here. This I wanna keep fairly short so that there's a nice taper coming from the front fly, front half of the fly to the back of the fly. So almost to just about the bend, maybe even a little bit. Less than that. Make a couple wraps and tighten her up. And then make sure it kind of evens itself on the, on the shank here. So before we trim that out, we're going to tie in our bottom piece, which is going to be the white. Some hairline marabou blood quills in the white. And we want to be sparse at the tail and kind of gain. Um, and add a little bit more bulk into the front of the fly. So we're going to tie this in same length. And you can snip out Kind of try to hide some of this with some of my thread wraps. But like I said, this is going to be pretty hidden. And uh, it's nice using the nano silk because you can get a little bit on there and then kind of crank down on it and it really helps pull everything together without adding a ton of bulk from the thread. And of course, a little bit of zappa gap for safekeeping. And we'll 
door would finish. So set that off to the side and we'll get our size two in there. So same hook, 750, 7050, uh, wide gap MFC streamer hook. So now I got some uh, intruder wire. Uh, this is the Senyo's Thin. Uh, just for you know the two to four, uh, you can maybe get away with the the standard, but the thin I think just makes things easier, and it's it's super strong. Oh, we got some. Killer caddis beads. Uh, these are the large, and uh, I think color really matters. But this is the metallic brown, and we're just going to use one of these guys because we just want to create enough segmentation. And with these, you know, two x, three x long um, hook shanks, doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm throw that one down in there, um, and just creating a little bit of separation from hook point to hook point. I don't go through the eye, but I like super glue. So get a little bit of that in there. And it's it's secure. It's not going anywhere. Uh, with the intruder wire, thread really bites down. We're using the nano silk. It's not going anywhere. Okay, so now going uh, towards, towards the eye of the hook, uh, we're just gonna continue that process. So we're gonna start with uh, some more marabou um, kind of cover up the bead and like blend it into that back hook um, and then we'll get in there with some of the the polar chenille. Got another nice piece of marabou so that's going to be our, our bottom um, and then I got another nice piece for the top side here. I'm going to pick out a nice feather that will blend nicely with everything. Get it so that it's about halfway on this back fly. That, and then to help prop this up a little bit, I'm gonna make one wrap, maybe two wraps, kind of under. Make sure I'm not trapping any or too many. That kind of helps pop it up and add to that taper that we're looking for. And then we got our white, and we're just gonna match the length of the brown with the white. This is the main reason why I like the rotary vise, even though I don't use it to polymer stuff, but to be able to flip you know, your streamer, or, you know, whatever fly you're tying upside down and cleanly get at it. So a couple loose wraps and then I'll kind of adjust and even it up. So it's pretty even. And then take a bodkin and kind of get behind that feather again. Try to single out just the white that you're tying in here in my thread, hold it back, and there we go. Just that one really kind of popped it out, which was what we are looking for. Now we'll make a couple more securing wraps, and trim out my marabou.
Now we're going to go to our UV polar chenille. This is the rusty copper, really cool color. Trim out a little bit of this. Same thing, kind of see the direction all these are going. We're going to tie it in like that. And now we're starting to add in a little bit of that flash. Okay, so we just tied off our polar chenille. And now we're gonna start working in that marabou. And like I said, we're gonna start getting that darker color on the side of the hook, uh, because ideally this is how this fly is gonna ride in the water. Got another nice piece of marabou picked out here. And we'll start kind of making that transition because we're gonna do this a couple more times. Gonna take a couple more of these guys out. Here we go. Starting to rotate it. And lock that down there. There's a little bit. So see how it kind of gets that stair steppy taper to it. Uh, that's what we're looking for. So now this is kind of locked in how I like it. Make a couple tighter wraps. So I'm at like a little bit of an angle now and then the last one will get almost directly sideways. So I'm just trying to mirror it on the other side with the white. Open this feather up. Shape, good. Really secure it down, and then we can snip out our so really starting to take shape now. And we're starting to get that turn so the darker color is working its way to the top. So we're gonna hit it with just a little bit more, a couple more turns of the polar. Tie that in there. Palmer that around. Get all the way back to your thread wraps on the marabou. And just a couple more turns of this stuff. And that ought to be good. So about four or five turns. Capture that, leaving ourselves enough room for our head. So that things aren't bunched up. This we're gonna bring back just a little bit more. Just so this little spot is going to be where our marabou kind of stops and then we have enough room for our head and our, our eyes to get in here. All right, so marabou. This is really like the shoulders of your, your bait fish. And so now we want this one completely sideways and size that up. Throw two loose wraps and then kind of make our adjustments. And a couple tight wraps. And we'll go to our white. Safer front side here. There we go. 
go. Got that in there. Really see the kind of taper that we got, which is turning out really nice. And lock that in place. Pretty happy with that. Got enough room for our head. Kind of made that shift. The darker color on top, the lighter color on the bottom. And get our head going here. So for the head, uh, we're gonna trim a little bit of it around um, as soon as we kind of get it all laid out in there. But this is going to be some Bruiser Blend. Uh, this is the Bruiser Blend Junior by Hairline, then we're gonna do some cream on the bottom, so brown, and then cream on the bottom. So, this stuff, wanna grab a patch of it, kinda of pull it apart. We'll repeat this a couple of times going forward, uh, but we'll do much like we did with the Marabou and kind of alternate colors before we continue to move forward. So it's just stacking it on one of, on top of each other. Just like that, and this stuff is pretty easy to manipulate. Once you get it tied in there, and you can give it a little bit of a tug, slid down a little bit, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna hold them back over. And make a little bit of a dam. And then we're gonna continue to repeat that going forward. Same thing, another pinch. top side and we'll go back to the bottom right on top again A little bit more of our brown bruiser blend here. And last little bit of our white. Pretty good spacing leading up to the, the eye of the hook and yeah, that's one of the most important things when you're tying, you know, streamers or any fly in general. You know, when you're a beginner, maybe just starting out, just do not crowd the eye. Give yourself enough space and have a clean tie-off point to finish the fly. I'll take a little bit of zap. It's wrapped on there, and then we'll do our whip finish. Snip out our thread. Uh, now we can do the aesthetics of the fly. So, got a little comb here, kind of run that through a couple times. Just get out those fibers. I'm going to get it so that it's straight up and down. And this is where we're going to trim the fly up to kind of get it to take the head shape that we want. 
So to finish this guy off, I'm gonna start with the bottom. I'm gonna pluck this out just a little more. So we want kind of like a round, rounded head, and then we're gonna leave these back fibers to blend in a little bit more with the fly. Try to shape the head up. Remember you can always go finer, so take your time trimming heads. You know, you spend all this time tying a nice fly. It sucks to ruin the head of the fly and <laughs> be unhappy with your finished product. a little bit longer scissor. Okay, so there it is. Looking really good. Got a really good shape to it. Now we're gonna throw on our eyes. Uh, if you have the time, I would highly suggest using some kind of epoxy um, just because it will be that durability uh, with the zappy gap may hold for you know a fish or maybe two fish or a couple casts um, but if you use some epoxy kind of adds a little bit more structure to the head and um, will definitely sink those eyes into the epoxy and stay fixed and i'm going to lay down a little blob See you're smoking. Got my eye. There's one. And this is just like a little clip from a grocery store or something. And I'm just gonna squeeze that down so that I don't get like zap that squeezes out the sides on my fingers. And then I touch the eye and it touches my finger and the eye stuck to my finger and I pull it off what I'm trying to put on. And it helps kind of avoid having the, you know, marks on the on the eye itself. Now we'll throw the eye on the other side. Another dab is that. One more eye. So now we got the second eye on there and I'm going to kind of clamp them both together. Um, like I said before, real nice, easy to just lay a clip on there of some sort so your hands or fingers don't get interfered uh, with the glue. There you have it. Gallops Flatliner. Really cool bait fish pattern. Do it in your natural colors, do it in your rainbow trout colors, brown colors. You know, it's a really good juvenile fish pattern. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, of course, give us a like if you did. And uh, for all the materials, make sure you go to avimax.com. Uh, thanks for time with us. Have a good one.